Well, it's time now for another look at today's papers. Erin Ogunke is back here in the studio. Erin, you have, of course, been looking at how papers are digesting uh, last night's results. What? does the French press have to say today? Well, Haxi, uh, Daily Parisien, Le Parisien, says that there are 10 major takeaways. I won't do all 10 of them, but just maybe the top four, uh, Macron and Le Pen, are in the second round, just like in 2017. That abstention, as you and Philip, Philip were saying earlier, was very high. More than one in four voters uh, didn't go to the polls. They also said that far-left uh, candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon did better than in 2017 and indeed appeared to benefit from the, quote, useful vote strategy, which is casting himself as the only only left-wing candidate that would have been capable of making it to the to the second round proved proved to be the case with over 20 percent. Uh, now, Eric Zemmour, however, says Le, Le Parisien did much worse than expected, totally failing on his goal to replace Marine Le Pen as the leader of the right with just seven percent of the vote. Uh, for Humanité, though, Haxi, that almost doesn't matter. The left-wing paper says that the far right has never gotten as many votes as it did on Sunday. Between uh, Marine Le Pen and Eric Zemmour, 32.4 percent of the French population voted for far right candidates. It's huge. Uh, that gives Marine Le Pen uh, a pretty substantial additional pool of votes moving forward, um, especially as Zemmour actually called on his on his uh, on his supporters to vote for Le Pen. Uh, for Libération, too, Haxi, this time. It's really frightening, more frightening than in 2017, writes the paper. The editorialist says that Marine Le Pen's successful attempt to soften her image was as reassuring as if Hannibal Lecter were to make a professional transition into the restaurant business. So not very Ouch. reassuring indeed. Uh, and then to finish Haxi, right-leaning paper, Le Figaro looked at the challenges facing Emmanuel Macron. Um, they, they say that Macron should avoid simply demonizing Marine Le Pen as a strategy that he really needs to look beyond that, not stigmatize uh, people people who, who, or who could either vote for him or for her, really, and say that uh, he's, they said that he shouldn't do too much to try and tempt the left either, uh, that that'll risk, um, that he'll never be considered left-wing enough to grab people who would have voted for Mélenchon, and that that would also risk turning more right-leaning voters towards Marine Le Pen. And how can he not? Because he does have to find those votes somewhere after all. Uh, well, another major takeaway uh, from last night's uh, election the almost complete disappearance, the melting away of the centre-left and centre-right, the socialists and the Républicains. Yeah, very embarrassing for those two what used to be mainstream popular parties. Haxi, right-wing Les Républicains, as you say, uh, never done so poorly in an election. Valérie Pécresse, 4.7% of the vote, under the 5% required to have your um, fees reimbursed. Uh, that compares to François Fillon's 20% in 2017. Situation, if you can imagine, even worse for Anne Hidalgo on the left, Socialist Party, just 1.7% of the vote, less than 2%, uh, compared to 6%, not great either, for Benoit Amon in 2017. Makes the socialists sound like a, a truly fringe party. <laughs> Um, so what about the international press? What are the, their main takeaways today? Well, I'll start with the Financial Times taxi. The British paper describes the upcoming second tour as the fight for Emmanuel Macron's life. The paper saying that Marine Le Pen this time around, similar to many French papers, uh, will pose a tougher challenge than she did in the 2017 contest. They say that that's because she's expanded uh, her platform, really focusing on uh, cost of living issues, uh, uh, widening her appeal to blue collar voters, uh, especially in areas where the Yellow Vest movement was popular, for example. They say, in contrast, Emmanuel Macron is no longer the kind of dynamic outsider uh, that he was. He's instead become a symbol of Parisian elites and the wealthiest members of French society. Um, to stay in, in the West, Haxi, the New York Times said uh, on the cover of today's uh, international edition, uh, it's French anthropologist Didier Fassin who says that Emmanuel Macron went at the beginning from being neither left nor right to now overtly focusing his campaign on two of the right's traditional major campaign platforms, which is controlling immigration and stiffening secularism. Uh, it says that by absorbing his opponent's uh, views into his own platform, he, quote, risks bringing about a political landscape hazardously skewed to the right. Now, the uh, stakes we know in this election are high in France, of course, but also outside of France. Yeah, especially in the context of the war in Ukraine, Haxi. That was a really dominant theme in the international press this Monday morning. A lot of papers saying that a win for Marine Le Pen would mark, of course, a major shift in French foreign policy. For Politico, her victory is dangerous, uh, both for the EU and for NATO. Uh, they want to know if Paris will continue to be a reliable ally as the conflict in Ukraine between, with, between Russia and Ukraine continues. Uh, as the paper reminds us, Marine Le Pen says that uh, she wants to remove France 
France, which is the EU's only nuclear power, uh, from NATO, so as not to be caught up in conflicts that don't directly involve France. Um, meanwhile, Haxi, Russian opposition site Medusa, of course, has, has not forgotten that Marine Le Pen uh, actually went to visit Vladimir Putin in Moscow in her 2017 uh, campaign, adding that her party actually took and still owes money uh, a loan from a Russian bank. Um, and finally, in Europe, Haxi, German paper, the Frankfurter Allgemeine, uh, wonders why the horrible images coming out of Ukraine didn't do more to sway what's essentially 50 percent of voters that voted for candidates who were either used to admire uh, Vladimir Putin or continue to admire Vladimir Putin. That includes Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Marine Le Pen, Eric Zemmour, and some of the other smaller communist leftist uh, candidates. It says that Macron is fighting then both for the Élysée and for Europe. OK, Erin Egunke here with a look through the uh, French and international uh, press reaction to uh, last night's uh, election results. Thank you very much indeed.